this is a video which start from a story and that story the actor in the story is actually me there are two actors in the story in fact three one is me one is BNP Paribas and one is MS Monetary Authority of Singapore I know many people trust or don't trust this story doesn't matter so what happened that Singapore FinTech Festival is actually of five days every year so the first three days belongs to a government and next three days belongs to uh, sorry first three days belong to government and next two days belongs to industry or banks they can invite anyone so you know in one of the meetings we were also invited and that's very near it's near to raffles place that is at bnp paribas building and you know i was and uh, i always attend i try and attend every meeting of uh, singapore fintech festival you get a lot of contacts but somehow in some cases it is not possible because attending multiple meetings at the same point of time is little tiresome but in this case i was lucky i went to bnp paribas and, and attended that meeting so what happened that is just like a singapore fintech festival you have a lot of exhibitions i don't know how many been to singapore fintech festival but you have a lot of exhibitions similarly in the banks when banks uh, you know have their personal meetings in which they give invitations so a similarly kind of exhibitions are there some of the exhibitors belong to bank and now see nowadays trend is little changing and some of them belongs to the third party and some of them belongs to the funds owned by the bank so what happened i was having one by one by one all exhibitions by the way people go there for goodies but i go there to have the business cards to get to know how exactly thing works and so on and so forth so at one of the exhibition i stopped and i was looking at i was looking at uh, you know the dlt which is distributed Le distributed ledger technology the blockchain based solution offered offered by bnp paribas covering the trade finance i was very enthusiastic at that point of time you know that i wanted to see that what exactly they do so what i do i did actually i stood at the last and i was listening to that banker and by the way that banker was an indian banker and i stood at the last and i was listening him word by word without any intervention from my side once he completed his talk i started asking questions about the trade finance capability of that product and i don't know you trust or not in less than 5 minutes he acknowledged that this product is actually serving letter of credit it do not serve or it is not capable to serve the higher end trade finance product like standby letter of credit you know dplc direct pay letter of credit subordinate bonds and there are number of trade finance product number bank guarantee standby bank guarantee the and skr safe keeping receipt we have uh, sub lease lease safe safe keeping receipt so list is very long in less than 5 minutes he acknowledged that this only covers the uh, letter of credit uh, and that to on selective banks then i raised a question i said okay i agree it do not cover uh, you know the higher end trade finance product and even the simplistic product which is also known as plain manila product you offering the selective banks who are your partners by the way i don't know how many of you know this or not this is a sheer violation because this means consortium anyways i don't know how many people know or not because now everyone claim to be a blockchain expert but once i started asking the finance question on blockchain people are always silent then i started raising questions on the swift architecture of trade finance trade finance always have two legs number 1 is a functional leg and number 2 is a technological leg no trade finance in this world even i am alive and even after i am not going to be alive can work when you have when you do not have either of that you have to have both and that too just like the two tracks of the railway they have they need to work together 
I raised few questions about SWIFT class, which is class 1 to class 9. By the way, as you know that we are one of the leading players in private placement programs, so I specifically went and start asking about class 7 questions, which is 760 and all and humongous amount of questions. As usual, within few minutes, this person went on his toes, down to his toes and said that our product do not offer an integration with the Swift architecture. And I was like the height of the frustration in my life at that point of time. And I still remember it was around 4.30 p.m. Singapore time at that point of time. I was at the height of frustration. I said, boss, you are here showing your DLT, distributed ledger technology, blockchain based product. And first you acknowledge that it only covers the plain vanilla. And now you are saying that it do not integrate with the Swift architecture. So what kind of shit it is? From here, the heated argument starts and one of the bankers of BNP Paribas came and I don't know what he said to that person in Singaporean, in local language of Singaporean, but it looks like that they acknowledged that they are selling a wrong product and now they need to either accept it or they need to wind that discussion. So they went for the second option. They winded that discussion quickly. And anyways, I was also not interested to continue because I don't think it is in the interest of my time. I immediately left the meeting and when I got down, somebody from the back came and said, I wanted to talk to you, a little young guy. I said, okay, what do you want to talk? He asked few questions. I replied few questions. Then he gave his card. He was from Monetary Authority of Singapore. I still have his card. And he's from the FinTech department. And I asked him to take a action against this bank because on the name of the FinTech, they are selling a product which is functionally and technically incompetent. And I am 500% sure that Monetary Authority of Singapore did nothing. Because Monetary Authority of Singapore only take actions against those people who cannot reply. But they never take action against the people, those who reply. This is the reality. Now what happened? Today I got another news pertaining to this project because now we have started launching the, you know, uh, I would say started launching a lot of blockchain related videos and I assure you before the next FinTech festival starts, we going to be the leading challenger of this blockchain technology. And I personally will challenge blockchain, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and also the Python, as far as the functional understanding is concerned, that I assure you. Go to hell, any regulator, go to hell, the system, the law, the people, the feedback, it doesn't matter. So today we got a news that a blockchain based platform known as Contour is launched in Singapore two days before whereby it 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 planning to relieve basically it planning to take trade finance on the digital platform basically the blockchain based platform that's interesting because once you have the headline you felt that it's a great innovation happened you know it's already 3 a.m in the morning i read every day newspaper a lot of articles and all so what i did i started reading line by line and I got to know it is the same project which I saw last year in the Singapore FinTech Festival wherein one of the contenders is BNP Paribas. And I collated the list of the banks, those who participated in this game. And they are Bangkok Bank, BNP Paribas, CTBC, HSBC, ING, Standard Chartered, SCB, Bain & Company and their technological partner are Crypto and R3. Pro BLK and R3. Now I pause this and this story and we will go two days before to this story. I don't know how many of you went to Singapore FinTech Festival and how many of you even uh, uh, bothered to cover a lot of uh, ex exhibitors because when, whenever I go to Singapore FinTech Festival I always cover multiple exhibitions for the sake of knowledge 
and one of the exhibitions which was very handsomely actually uh, designed and I think it's a heavy investment date. It's a VC money. It's by R3. It's again a blockchain based setup in trade finance. I got a lot of talk. I got a chance to talk with uh, them and what they told to me that they, they are having a blockchain enabled trade finance platform. So these two stories integrate with each other because in this project, when I met BNP Paribas, no one told me that R3 is the partner. But now from that article, I got to know that R3 is a partner. And I remember my meeting with the R3 during Singapore FinTech Festival. In fact, I have the business card of the gentleman with whom I met. Now, what is the problem? The problem is on the name of the FinTech, we are creating a hype which is actually not resolving the purpose, which is actually not resolving the purpose, rather we creating a hype. Because if you look at the pie of the trade finance, the big boys are SPLC, DPLC, bank guarantee, standby letter of credit. In fact, this product BNP Paribas showed it even do not cover bank guarantee. And according to the article which we got on the internet, it looks like that letter of credit is the only product which is there in the trade finance. Apart from letter of credit, there is nothing in the trade finance. And for your information, there are multiple type of letter of credits which we have. And all these multiple type of letter of letter of there are 48 columns in a letter of credit. Guys, do you know 48 columns? A single letter of credit across the globe are having 48, 48 columns and all 48 columns is not mandatory to fill. Some are blank, some needs to fill and out of 48 columns, there are only two columns which are quantitative in nature, rest all which is 46 are qualitative in nature. And multiple type of trade finance instrument, which is standby letter of credit, direct pay letter of credit, subordinate bond, bank guarantee, standby bank guarantee, SKR, safekeeping receipt, which is uh, leased safekeeping receipt, non leased safekeeping receipt, leased SPLC, non leased SPLC, and it's a very big tree. But what is the hype? The hype is that these banks have made a consortium and on the name of the fintech, they are selling a product which actually not resolving the purpose. Like once I reading the article is said that a normal standard or a normal letter of credit take five to 10 days. It's absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. A normal letter of credit in the current scenario takes more than two months. No bank in this globe can deliver a letter of credit in five to ten days. They take more than two months. And I'm telling you, even in some cases, two months is a shorter period. In most of the cases, they take more than two months. And when it comes to standby letter of credit, they take some cases more than four to five months. And they, they gave in this article that it takes five to 10 days, which is a wrong statement. And then they said using this blockchain technology, they can make it happen in 24 hours. Which is again wrong. Now I tell you second part of the, of my discussion that happened with MAS and also BNP Paribas. Now this is the first part I told you. In the second part, once I was leaving, once that another banker of BNP Paribas came, another one came from my back and he started asking questions that who are you? What are you? What are your credentials? Why you are asking so many questions? I said, boss, wait, I am from this company. I'm an ex treasurer. Open YouTube and check. And we are one of the contenders for the digital banking license. So you are talking to more or less a bank, right? So don't try and say that I'm a student from NUS or SMU. Then he little bit relieved, you know, then I asked the question from the earlier banker that is that platform connected with Reuters, Bloomberg, MT4, MT5, ECN, Edge or peer to peer, any one of them. 
and the answer which I got, I expected much earlier from, from his side is that no, it is not. He told me that this blockchain architecture is indifferent from the front office. We not yet integrated that. And I told the same thing to MS guy. That first, this is not a blockchain architecture. This might be a blockchain architecture because I not went technical insight. This is not a complete trade finance setup. Number one, it's a wrong thing which you are selling that it is not a trade finance setup. Second, it, it's not integrated with Thomson Reuters, Bloomberg, uh, which is OMS, Order Management System, ECNs, Electronic Communication Networks, EMSX, and or EMS, Execution Management System and all. So it means that front office is completely indifferent than the blockchain architecture who only serve the plain Manila product which is trade, which is letter of credit. And I'm damn sure MS has not taken any action against that. Now what are we doing? I would like to conclude this discussion with just three simple questions. Are we creating a hype? When it comes to fintech, I was silent on fintech from last six months because I was busy in designing my, my virtual bank architecture. Now it is ready and we are ready for launching. Is regulator really understand what fintech stands at or is fintech is a buzzword that you can do anything on the name of the fintech? And third, are banks internally join hands and they decided that they create a fancy product and they let or force corporate to get in because regulator do not understand and by the time even regulator understand that they got the money. And banks are, uh, it's not the first time banks did that. By the way, all the banks I have, which is BNP Paribas, HSBC, ING and Standard Chartered. These are the four banks you can check on the Google. They are involved in almost every scandal. Check Google. BNP Paribas, HSBC, ING and Standard Chartered. So I would like to conclude this discussion apart from these three questions is that can we trust regulator? Are regulatory agencies competent enough to reply? Are regulatory agencies competent enough to comment, modify or to make a strategic change? If BNP Paribas along with the multiple banks can sell the product in Singapore, it means that he can sell anywhere practically. If Monetary Authority of Singapore cannot get it just then forget RBI and forget SEBI or forget, forget the African banks, right? They don't even understand that. This is the world in which we are practically living. And I would like to conclude this discussion with a strict warning to all fintech players that I am now in fintech. And now we're going to be shooting around 100 plus fintech related videos, which includes machine learning, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, Python, and everything covering functional and technological part, including Swift. And you know us that Treasury Consulting do not think even once before challenging the status quo. We never worry about the status quo. We always challenge it. And feedback go to hell. Maybe in next six months or seven months, you will see Treasury Consulting name in the newspaper. They are going to challenging a leading regulator about his financial capability, his functional knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm literally surprised that the paid media is reached at a level when you can publish anything without knowing anything. You in fact do not dare to ask from these banks the product which you actually sell. You're talking about letter of credit which in that pyramid is only tip of an iceberg. And in this whole article, I have not saw the, the alignment with the SWIFT architecture and the alignment with the front office. 
and as the time permit we surely going to have a board based description that how exactly trade finance blockchain architecture should work with this we thank you very much you know my mobile numbers which is plus 91 in indian code 9899242978 you know our fixed in, you know my second number 9818485155 so you know our fixed income platform www.fixedincome.global and don't forget to visit our tiktok channel hedge fund academy audio books our short term platform there are so many things we launched and i'm very happy that things are moving in our favor and things are so volatile that even if we need to challenge a regulator we do that have a good time talk soon